Hey y'all, Texas Taterbug here. Now what you're going to see is uh, basically the completion of the furnace, more or less. Um, you know, uh, in the last video I had the legs uh, attached um, and in place, and now what I'm using is uh, the ceramic insulating wool lining um, uh, for the for the forge. Now this, I'm sorry, for the furnace, and this is going to make it. Um, a whole lot lighter than a refractory cement would be, but this stuff is, is really dangerous to work with and dangerous if it's exposed. Um, and so you'll see what I've done to try and protect myself against that. Obviously, uh, in this uh, video, you're going to see me wearing kind of basically like three layers of protective gear at all times, and I'm wearing a respirator. Um, I'm also not using the cheapest quality uh, ceramic wool. The reason why I've got this huge roll and not just a small amount of it is because I actually uh, sourced the Morgan Super Wool, wool Plus, which is um, a uh, less biologically uh, dangerous uh, insulating wool. Um, at the expense of not being able to find it easily in smaller quantities. Now, of course, I'm going to have a whole lot left over. As you can see, I've cut away um, enough here uh, <laughs> to really line the forge twice, and I've got a whole lot left. So, if somebody wants some insulating wool, uh, hit me up. Let me know. Uh, let me know how much you need, and I probably can get you some. Um, I was able to source it uh, pretty cheaply um, through eBay because there was a supplier that had several damaged boxes that he wasn't going to be able to sell commercially anymore, um, and he was selling them at a, at a steep discount. And I ended up being able to get that that huge roll um, for for a much cheaper price than than it should have been. But again, I I was willing to pay the extra money to work with the less dangerous of the ceramic wool products that are out there. So I've cut this uh, to the appropriate size, I think, and now I'm going to you know, measure it out. Now you want to have it overlap a little bit, and you'll see that I actually get this wrong, of course. Well, maybe not of course, but you'll see that I get it wrong, which is always fun um, once I get it cut down. And I think I have it exactly right. I'm going to put it in there, and I'm going to end up with a little like half-inch gap. Now it turns out, uh, if you were just going to line your forge with wool and leave the wool exposed, that would be a big deal. Um, I'm just going to plug that gap with another little piece of wool and that's going to be just fine because you'll see what I'm eventually going to do is actually cover this wool in a satanite mortar lining um, after uh, securing it to the sides of the container with some uh, sheet metal screws. So once I get it cut down I'm actually going to you know, make sure that it fits well and you can see that I've got kind of a press fit into the lid. Um, and that's pretty much the entire lining done. Um, so now I want to have an opening in the top, you know, not only as a vent, but I want it to be large enough that I can use it as an opening for a forge. Uh, you can tell that this is constructed to where if I set it on its side, that uh, two of the three legs are going to suspend the, the back of it, and the front of it will be open so that if I have it uh, set up correctly, I should be able to, if I have an opening in the front, that I can place steel into, I should be able to, to use it as a forge as well as a furnace. So what I'm doing here is I'm cutting kind of a forge-shaped opening in the top uh, that's big enough for me to drop aluminum cans through uh, in order to uh, retain the heat within the furnace when I'm using it for melting metal. For the side, I'm, I'm going to cut the side using the uh, exterior of the weed burning torch that I purchased for this uh, project, um, ultra cheap weed burning torch I think from Harper Freight um, that I thought was going to work great for this uh, and so what I've done is I've just used that to, to cut out the sides and you can see I kind of I ran out of cutting discs on my Dremel tool of course so I started to use my uh, drill to cut through in order to preserve my cutting discs and that worked fine. Now I'm going to attach some U-bolts to the top and anchor those. Um, and again, you know, this is my first, uh, these are my first projects with sheet metal. It's fun. It's fun working with metal. I'm actually enjoying getting to do some metal work, um, but I don't know much about it. So you'll see I'll, I'll drill these holes, and they're not quite big enough, and they're not just exactly aligned correctly, and this is metal. So there's no, you know, there's there's not much wiggle room, although luckily this is sheet metal, and so there's enough wiggle room that I'm able to force these U-bolts in. Um, and then I'll attach them with bolts. But it was, uh, <laughs> it was a process, and you can see I've got this, uh, this uh, grinding bit uh, tool thingy, um, which is pretty good for cleaning up the edges of my, my cut for the opening. 
um, did not do so great for boring out these holes. A, a step that would have been the most appropriate tool to use for this rather than um, rather than a big uh, regular bit uh, and a aluminum oxide grinder, but whatever. I used the tools I had. Um, eventually I am able to get both of these U-bolts in and, uh, and secure it into place with, uh, with nuts and uh, I'm, I'm happy with the result. Now, and remember, you know, the mini metal foundry uh, design that uh, the King of Random originally designed required you to have um, U-bolts because you were lifting this huge refractory cement lid. This is going to be much lighter with ceramic wool. In fact, it doesn't feel any heavier than a regular uh, trash can uh, lid. Now, I, I'm lost the footage of the first coat of the Satanite uh, lining. I painted the entire interior with the Satanite, and I wanted to at least show you guys that this goes on with a paintbrush really easily. Um, you can make it pretty much any consistency you want, uh, but I wanted to make sure that I had it uh, thick enough that it would provide a little bit of, an ins uh, of, a, of a protective layer, and then I actually um, wanted to apply a second coat. Um, I end up with about an eighth of an inch, close to maybe a quarter of an inch um, covering the entire surface of the interior of the furnace uh, with a little bit more in some strategic places like around the, the opening for the torch um, and around the opening of the uh, furnace lid. Now this Satanite is easy to work with and what it does maybe more importantly than just being easy to work with is it does two things. It protects you from the ceramic wool, which is uh, potentially a dangerous thing to have uh, some exposure to. And it also is protecting the ceramic wool from things that it, that it might be exposed to. So for instance, if I was going to use a borax flux for doing forging, particularly for doing forge welding uh, inside this uh, as my forge, then I would need to have some kind of barrier to protect the ceramic wool from the, from the borax flux because uh, that super high Heat, heated uh, flux will just to dissolve the ceramic wool. And so I'm doing two things by putting the ceramic uh, wool underneath the Satanite mortar. Once I get this complete, basically the furnace is complete, I'm going to fire it up with my torch and I'm super excited to try it out. So excited that I actually went out in the snow to try it out, but once I get everything uh, set up out in the snow and get everything up and running, what I realize is this torch just isn't going to cut it. It's not pulling in enough oxygen and so therefore, as you can tell, all of the flames on the top are because there's unburned propane coming all the way out the top of the opening of the furnace. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the build, and um, we'll see you in the next video.